Hey everyone, April Dunham here. Today I want to talk about how you can validate data inside your Power Apps. If you've ever needed to make sure that your users are inputting stuff like phone numbers and email addresses, social security numbers, zip codes, you name it, entering in that data correctly, then this is a video for you. But first, here's the intro. So let's take a look at what I mean by data validation. A common scenario for this is you have some inputs in a form in Power Apps, and you wanna make sure for certain things like phone number that they're entering it in in the correct format. For example, maybe you want three digits and you wanna separate it out with a hyphen each time. And you wanna make sure that that's consistently entered in that format for data integrity purposes. Other use cases might be making sure email addresses are valid, zip codes, socials, things like that. So that's what we mean by data validation. This data validation is done in Power Apps using the isMatch function. What isMatch allows you to do is pass it in a value from your Power App, so like we just saw there, a text input value, and compare it to a pattern, or also called a regular expression. All a regular expression is, if you've never heard of them, is a string that defines a text matching a pattern. So if we look at this image here, we might have a case where we have roll numbers. So each employee is assigned a roll number and it's always going to be a four digit number. So 1001 to 1004. The regular expression for that to match and make sure it matches up is what we see here. So it will just be digit, ampersand digit, ampersand digit, ampersand digit. So we're saying, make sure this matches four digits all together. So now that we're kind of familiar with regular expressions, let's take a look at that is match function. So what I'm doing here is I'm using icons to show the user if the data is inputted correctly. So if it's invalid, I'm showing a warning label that's red. If it's valid, that will change to a green check mark. And this is all done with the isMatch function. So let's look at this icon for phone, for example. If you've never worked with icons, you can select the icon and go to the icon property. And this allows you to input a formula to dynamically change which icon shows. So that's all I'm doing here. I'm using the isMatch function in an if statement to match it and show a different icon if it matches it or not. So to use the isMatch, you just type isMatch, and then you'll pass it in the text that you're wanting to validate. So in my case, this is our text box with the phone number data, and I'm getting the text of that. Now, once you put in the text that you want to validate, you need to pass it in your regular expression that you want to match it on. So this will look very similar to that example when I was explaining what a regular expression was, so for a phone number, I said that I want it to be three digits um, separated by a hyphen, another three digits by a hyphen, and then the last four of the phone. So this is the regular expression for that. So we're just having digit and digit and digit, and there's a shortcut for hyphen, so we can put a hyphen in there so it'll match to make sure that there's a hyphen. Have your digits again, hyphen, and then four more digits. So this will match to make sure that it matches that format. So this is match formula, it gives you a true or a false value. So if this text that I have in my phone text box does match this format, then it will return true. If it doesn't, it's going to return false. So all I'm doing here in this if statement is I'm saying if is match. So if it evaluates to true, show the check mark icon. If it's not a match, so else, our else value here, then show the warning icon. And then taking this a step further, I'd also like the color of the icon to change. So I'll go up here and to my properties panel and I'll change this to color instead of icon. And I'll use that exact same expression, except instead of changing the icon, I'm changing the color from green to red. So now if I type in a phone number 
without the hyphen, it's going to give me that error. But if I type it in with, then it switches to a green check mark. Okay? So that's how you validate a phone number. Now let's take a look at email address. Email address is one of the easier ones to validate because um, Power Apps gives you a handy shortcut for that. So if we look at this icon again, and let's look at the formula for that. So this is match. Again, we're just passing it in the text we want to validate. So that's the text from my email text box. Now we don't have to do a complicated uh, regular expression here because there's a shortcut for email just called email and it will validate to make sure that it's a valid email address. So just seeing this in action, I put in a valid email, it's good. I put in an invalid email, so maybe I don't have the at, then it's invalid. So it's checking to make sure a, that you have that at symbol and then you have a dot something to make sure that it's a valid email. All right, moving along, let's take a look at zip code next. Now this one's pretty easy too. Zip code, in this case, I just want it to be um, here in the States, the five digit zip code. So we can just pass in the zip code text and use our digit placeholders and put five of those in there and that will work. Now, if you wanted the full um, zip code, you know, separated by the hyphen, it's easy to change to accommodate for that. So like five and five, so the entire 10 digit one. We can just copy those digits and then in between them do an and hyphen and that will accommodate for the 10 digit zip code. So let's just look at this real quick. Right, so now as soon as I have five digits on the left separated by a hyphen and five on the right, it shows that it's valid. I think I have some formula is a little wonky for the icon there, but you get the point. It's valid. It's green. All right. So making sense so far, I hope pretty straightforward to do this data validation. Now let's take a look at social security number next. So here for social is match again, pass it in the text that you want to validate. And then again, a social security number is what it's three digits followed by a hyphen, two digits followed by a hyphen and then four digits. So that's all you need to do is you need to put that pattern in here. So we have three digits, hyphen two, hyphen four. That will validate against this and make sure that you're entering it into the correct format. So if I go, well, I did one too many, but as soon as I do just the four at the end, it is valid. All right, let's take a look at a couple more examples here. So the next one is a validating a URL. Now I want to show a specific example for this. So in this form, I'm wanting the user to enter in their Twitter profile URL. So because I want to enter in something so specific, I'd like to match to make sure that they're putting in HTTPS, twitter.com, WAC, and then their username, which is a valid Twitter profile URL. So I actually want to match on that to make sure that whatever they're typing in contains the twitter.com and the HTTPS. So let's take a look at how to do that. So again, let's look at our formula here, for the icon. Now I'm doing something a little bit different for this example. So I'm still using the is match, but instead of the regex, I'm using the begin with function. So still passing in the text box for my URL, but then I'm saying if it begins with, and then I'm passing in the HTTP twitter.com um, forward slash. Um, I also want to allow for if they put in HTTP or HTTPS. So I'm using the or function and I'm having another is match and matching that same URL except to allow for HTTPS too. So if whatever the enter begins with that, then I'll recognize it as a valid Twitter URL. Now, if it wasn't something for Twitter and you just wanted to make sure that they were putting in HTTP or HTTPS correctly, you could just remove that and then it would make sure that they're entering in a valid URL that contains the HTTP. And lastly here, let's look at how we can enforce a password standard with the is match. Now this function here, this regex looks a little bit intimidating, but this sample 
is actually out there on the Microsoft documentation. So if you go to docs.microsoft, um, WAC Power Apps, you'll see this is match function documentation. And one of the samples here is on a password. So what this particular regex that they provide you is doing is it is making sure that whatever you enter in in there contains at least eight, nine or 10 characters and one digit in one alphabetic character in that it contains no special characters. So kind of specific use case for a password. So again, um, all I did here was copy that, that regex expression and used it inside my power app here. So let's just test that out. So it said eight, nine or 10, it needs a number and an alphabetic character. So, so as soon as I hit eight and I have one number in there, then it says that that's valid. Now, if I try to put in a special character, it's invalid because that particular regex is not allowing special characters. Now, obviously, if you're using this for a password within Power Apps, you probably don't want to display what they're actually typing, right? So another quick tip, although not related to data validation, is you can mask this um, to show the dots like you would a password. So if you select your text box here, on the right hand side, you'll see a mode drop down. And in that, we can actually change that to password. And when we do, it obfuscates what you're typing just like you would see in a normal password field. So pretty cool. All right, so I hope that you found this useful. Um, if you want any other ideas for possible regular expressions that you can use, again, go to this documentation on the Microsoft site here. They have several different examples for you to look through. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe, and I will catch you in the next video.